Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Akira Takahashi. I'm from Office University in Denmark. So today I'm going to talk about our recent paper, Security of Hedged Fiat Shamia Signatures Under Photo Tax. This is a joint work with Diego Aranya and Claudio Orandi from Office University and Greg Zabarucha from Microsoft Research. So, um, as the title suggests, this work is basically about the fault attacks against uh, Fiat Shamia type signatures. Especially, our goal in this work is to formally analyze the fault resilience of the existing Fiat Shamia signature schemes using the provable security methodology. So this work is actually motivated by the existing concrete fault attacks against uh, such signature schemes. So in this talk, um, first, I'm going to briefly talk about the history of the fault attacks against the Fiat, against the Fiat Shamia type signatures. Also, I'm going to explain uh, what the randomness hatching countermeasure is. And then I'm going to present our formal fault attacker model, uh, which we use in uh, the paper. And then finally, I'm going to give you a brief overview of our uh, provable security analysis. So, um, what are the Fiat Shamir type signatures? So, Fiat Shamir type signatures are usually uh, derived, derived from this kind of uh, three round canonical identification protocol. So, here the prover holds a, a secret key SK together with randomness, and the verifier has some uh, public key. And then, prover commits to um, SK and R, outputs the commitment and some state and send the first message to verifier. And then verifier um, sends back some challenge, uh, uniformly chosen from some challenge space, and then prover uh, responds with uh, message Z. Then finally, verifier accepts or rejects prover's proof. And it is, it is well known that um, such a three round scheme uh, can be made non-interactive by applying so-called uh, Fiat Shamia transform. And here, the signer uh, derives the challenge uh, by itself, uh, simply by hashing the first message and a message to be signed. And then, uh, this is also a known fact. So if the underlying identification scheme is special honest verified zero knowledge and also special sound, in other words, if it's a Sigma protocol, then the resulting signature scheme is uh, provably secure. And this paradigm has been applied to um, so many schemes uh, in the past. For instance, Schnorr or Jilokis Carter uh, may be the most uh, typical classic examples. And if you implement this um, Fiat Shamia type signature in practice, uh, you really have to be careful about the randomness used uh, in the sign. So here, so if the um, signature um, is relying on some random number generator, then of course this R uh, really has to follow the uniform distribution of a subset. Because otherwise, the security proof, proof doesn't hold. Not only that, but also uh, there's actually a concrete attack exploiting the randomness bias. And in practice, this randomness failure is a very, very common vulnerability. For instance, uh, of course, if you are uh, using some bad uh, random number generator, then uh, you could easily fail. Or if you are running the signing operation on some virtual machine, then if you use the same snapshot, then you may, dump, you, you may end up using uh, the same randomness seed, so the randomness repeats. Or uh, if there's some uh, side channel leakage from the signing operation, the adversely uh, learns uh, some part of the randomness with which adversely could um, recover the secret key. And uh, there are a bunch of uh, more attacks uh, exploiting randomness uh, failure. And actually, uh, there was even some uh, real-world incidents. Um, for instance, the PlayStation 3 uh, was actually uh, relying on the ECDSS signature which reuse the, the ran same randomness every time. So using this um, fact, uh, some attackers were able to um, recover the PlayStation 
three uh, signing key uh, using uh, only a few signatures as input. And there are many other incidents. For instance, the, the Bitcoin uh, ha has been stolen uh, because of the randomness failure as well, um, and so on. So this kind of stuff indeed happens in practice. Really, really, really have to uh, mitigate the risk of randomness failure. So, <clears throat> because of this, um, several researchers or practitioners have been proposing a countermeasure. And this is um, the most typical one, which is called the deterministic randomness generation. So here, um, instead of uh, using the random number generator, you simply uh, hash the signing key together with the message. And this is nice because you don't really have to uh, rely on the quality of the random number generator. As long as you uh, securely uh, implement the hash function, then you can make sure that the randomness follows the uniform distribution. And this is already uh, widely implemented uh, in real world. For instance, the EDDSA signature uh, employs this deterministic randomness generation. Also, uh, there's a deterministic variant of ECDSA, and there are many others as well. So it looks like um, we already solved the issue, but does it really solve? Actually, it doesn't, because <clears throat> um, we also have to uh, take into account the more advanced model of the attackers, which we analyze in this paper. So. Um, if you think about uh, the security of the implementation, you also have to uh, think about the risk of fault attacks, in which attacker uh, mo tries to modify the internal state of the target device, so that attacker could um, steal some internal uh, secret information that shouldn't have been leaked. And usually, attacker the fault attack attacker requires uh, some physical access to the device. But recently, uh, it turns, turned out that uh, the attacker could even uh, remotely mount the fault attacks. For instance, that this Robohammer attack uh, might be the most typical and the famous example of the remote fault attack. And so using um, such techniques, uh, there have been uh, many uh, recent fault attack, uh, attacks on, against uh, deterministic fiat shamir type signatures. And uh, there are many uh, differences, but uh, the essential ideas are very similar to each other. So uh, <clears throat> basically, um, the fault attacks against the deterministic signature tries to exploit the fact that uh, the determinism uh, could be uh, used to rewind the prover. So um, basically, uh, we can uh, classify those attacks into two categories. The first one is so-called a special soundness attack. So here, uh, the adversary first queries the signing, uh, signing oracle with some message M and obtains the legitimate signature on that. And for the second query, again, adversely queries with the same message M, but this time, the adversary injects some faults into, um, for instance, the input to the challenge hash function or the output of the challenge hash function, or it could be uh, the commitment output. And by doing so, um, so again, so we know that um, the deterministic property makes sure that the randomness R is reused uh, as long as the, the, the message to be signed is the same. However, uh, by injecting faults into later operations of the signing, then um, those um, lateral values E and Z are different. So this is essentially uh, the situation of the special soundness, in which um, if you are given two transcripts uh, sharing the same um, commit message, uh, commi the, the first commitment message, then you can efficiently uh, recover the signing key. So that's the, that was the one type of attack. The, the other type of, of attack is uh, randomness, large randomness bias attack. And this is also uh, similar to the prior one. So again, uh, the adversely queries with the message and they get a legitimate signature. 
And uh, for the second query, um, this time adversely tries to <coughs> inject a fault into the output of the first hash function. So again, the adversary knows that the ra randomness uh, is the same uh, if, if the signer tries to sign the same message. But because of the fault, adversely slightly uh, perturb the randomness R. So using this, um, the adversely can artificially cause a very uh, large randomness bias. In essence, like the adversely uh, can make sure that the second randomness is a bit different from the previous one. So using this fact, adversely can um, efficiently recover the secret key. So we have to uh, somehow try to mitigate the risk of such fault attacks. And actually, uh, those papers have proposed a uh, countermeasure called uh, randomness hedging. So here, instead of just hashing the signing key and the message, this time we include some nonce uh, to the input of the hash function. And this nonce could be from uh, some low quality uh, pseudo random number generator, or it could be just a counter. So um, we really don't have to make sure that this nonce uh, strictly follows the uniform distribution. And this is nice because, um, again, we don't really uh, rely on uh, the good random number generator. But at the same time, uh, the randomness R doesn't really repeat even if you sign the same message. So it seems secure, but unfortunately, there have been no formal analysis so far. So in this context, uh, we got a question. To what extent are the hedged fiat shamia signatures secure against fault attacks? So in this work, we answer this question. So our contributions in the paper can be summarized as follows. So first, in this paper, we um, presented a formal uh, attacker model and the security notions uh, to capture the corrupted nonces and the previous um, fault attackers. And using this, uh, we proved that the hedged uh, fiat shamir schemes in general are secure or insecure against certain class of fault attacks. And then using the generic uh, results, uh, we have two applications. The first one is um, XEDDSA signature scheme, which is a variant of the EDDSA signature uh, using the signal messaging protocol. The other application is uh, PICNIC2 uh, post-quantum uh, signature scheme. Okay, so let's have a look at our attacker model. So our approach is like this. So as a formal security notion, we define unforgeability against faults, chosen message, and nonce attacks. So this security notion first models the hedge construction, as well as the corrupted nonces. So adversely is allowed to uh, somehow um, corrupt the nonces in the signing operation. And on top of that, uh, we allow the adversely uh, to uh, tamper with uh, the internal operations uh, using some bit tampering uh, fault attack functions. And our uh, security notion is especially tailored to the fiat shamio type signatures so that we, ca we could really capture um, the concrete uh, fault attacks against the fiat shamio schemes. So, <clears throat> so what are the functions uh, to model the fault attacks? So, the, we, so in this work, uh, we provide uh, two types of fault attacks. The first one is um, flip bit function, which does a logical uh, negation of the, the certain position of the target uh, bit string. The second one is set bit, and this one uh, allows the adversely to fix certain position of the bit strings. And in this work, uh, we focus on the single uh, bit faults. And this is um, mostly sufficient uh, for characterizing uh, the recent uh, fault attacks we surveyed and which are about uh, the deterministic fiat shamia signatures. And these functions uh, model uh, most basic uh, transient fault attacks on the data flow. For instance, like you could model the bit flip 
on the, the CP register values, data buses, or memory cells. So using um, these functions, adversely uh, queries uh, some uh, faulty signing oracle. So first, the adversely is allowed to uh, choose a nonce. So this uh, model is some kind of randomness failure. The adversely can somehow um, control the, the nonce n. And then on top of this, adversely uh, chooses uh, some uh, fault function. And then adversely is able to uh, specify uh, which uh, position uh, adversely wants to inject the fault into. For instance, if you'd like to uh, model the special soundness attack, then adversely uh, may inject the fault into the, the fault uh, into the, the the challenge hash input. Or um, adversely could inject the fault into the, the output of the hash function. And we say that the scheme is UF FCM and secure um, if the, the advantage of the adversely in this experiment is negligible. So using this notion, uh, we analyze the security. So our security proof of view uh, is like this. So our starting point is uh, the most basic security notion uh, for the signature schemes. So uh, this is the uh, unforgeability against the key on the attack in which adversely is not given any signing oracle. And from this notion, we show the reduction to um, UF FCM security. Uh, for a certain uh, set of uh, fault, fault positions. And we basically require two um, conditions. The first one is uh, uh, nothing special. So as uh, required for normal uh, fiat shamia type signatures, uh, we need a special honest verified zone knowledge for the underlying identification scheme so that we can simulate the faulty uh, hedge signing oracle by invoking uh, the special honest verified zone or simulator. And the other property required is the non-repeating uh, message and non-spare. And this is important because if the adversary is able to repeat the message and nonce, and this is basically the uh, same as the deterministic uh, signature scheme. So uh, that's the only constraint. And using this, um, we are able to uh, prove the security uh, for the many uh, wire values. So this is uh, the overview of our uh, result. So as you can see here, uh, many wire values are resilient to uh, basic bit tampering fault attacks. And <clears throat> also um, on top of uh, those check marks, uh, if you assume uh, some additional property, uh, you can show the resilience of more wires. And here I'm going to explain about this subset revealing case. So what is a, a subset revealing identification protocol? So here, the prover commits to something and outputs a set of states. And then depending on the, the challenge value uh, from the verifier, prover simply uh, opens a subset of states. And intuitively, um, these uh, set, uh, states, a set of states, is resilient to false because um, it doesn't really uh, rely on uh, any uh, sec secret key. So we can, uh, in the security proof, uh, we can show that uh, we can simulate uh, the signing, faulty signing oracle, uh, even if the adversary is able to tamper with uh, those states. Also, uh, in the paper, we have some negative results. So basically, um, we cannot really prove the security uh, for the faults against those fire values. For instance, uh, if the adversary is able to fault uh, the, the input to the first hash function, then again, um, you can cause uh, the repeating nonce and the message pair. So this degenerates to the, the deterministic signature. Also, if the adversary is directly able to um, fix some value in the randomness R, then uh, in that uh, situation, we cannot really prove the security because um, the, random, the randomness R 
is directly uh, modified by the adversely. However, uh, we remark that um, even if uh, we cannot prove the security, um, this hedging is still better than the deterministic signing. Because in the deterministic signing, um, as we saw, the large randomness bias attack could occur. But here, uh, even if the adversary fixed some uh, random, some bits of the random value, uh, it's not really a very uh, large randomness bias. So um, even if you don't prove the security, um, it's somewhat better. Okay, so using these uh, generic results, uh, we analyze the security of the concrete schemes. So the first um, scheme we analyzed is the XEDSA. So first, EDDSA is an essentially uh, deterministic uh, version of Schnorr signature scheme. And this XEDDSA uh, could be considered as a hedged version of Schnorr signature scheme. So using the, our result, we can show that uh, XEDDSA is more photoresilient uh, than EDDSA or Schnorr signature scheme. And this XEDDSA uh, scheme is already uh, deployed in Signal Protocol. Also, uh, we analyzed Picnic 2, uh, which is a post-quantum signature scheme derived from the zero-knowledge proof based on the MPC the head paradigm. And this Picnic 2 also follows the Fiat Shamia paradigm. So of course, we shouldn't use the deterministic um, signing. So instead, if we use the hedge signing for the picnic two, as we saw since, um, so actually the, the picnic two's underlying, uh, zero knowledge protocol is subset revealing. So, uh, we can show that a hedged picnic two, uh, has more photo resilience, uh, than playing a normal Fiat Shamia type signatures. And the specification of the picnic two already recommends the randomness hedging countermeasure so that the practitioners, uh, should use, uh, this, the randomness hedging, uh, for the picnic two. So to conclude, in this work, uh, we defined the formal, uh, model and the security notions, uh, tailored to the Fiat Shamia type signatures. And then, uh, we proved the security and also insecurity of the hedged Fiat Shamia signatures against the basic uh, fault attacks uh, together with a corrupted noses. And our conclusion is that the hedging is uh, probably uh, more resilient uh, than the randomized or deterministic Fiat Shamia signatures. However, uh, it's not perfect. Perfect. Uh, because as we saw, we, we had some negative results. Especially, uh, we should really uh, focus on protecting uh, the input or output to the first hash function, uh, which does hedging. So after this analysis, uh, we've got a bunch of other questions. For instance, like we didn't cover the effect of uh, multiple faults in the analysis, or uh, what if adverse is able to uh, fault uh, within the 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 functions uh, like a commitment or response, or public parameters. Or, um, in this work, uh, we focused on the analysis in the classical random oracle model. What if the adversary is able to uh, inject a fault uh, together with the, the quantum access to the random oracle? Also, um, we'd like to extend our result uh, to the Fiat Shamia with awards type signature schemes, uh, which uh, nowadays uh, many lattice-based lattice signature schemes follow. Okay, so that's it from me. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm looking forward to uh, discussing with you uh, at the online conference. If you're interested in more details of our paper, uh, you can find our ePrint in this address. So, see you.